All right, peace, family. Um, I just want to get on and real quick apologize for the quality of this video. I just kind of looked at it, and um, for some reason, my camera seems to be recording with the bands on the side. Um, camera lady told me that I need to hold my phone sideways in order to avoid that, which I did, and then I actually redid the video, but it's still doing the same thing, so I got to figure it out. But I hope that you're able to kind of benefit from the information anyway. Peace. I got a problem I got a strange addiction Somebody help me I need an intervention It ain't alcohol or weed There's just one thing that I need I got an addiction To fruit trees I got an addiction to fruit trees I take a persimmon to please Hey, the next one I'm getting Jujube Peace family Alright, so I mentioned to y'all that I make my own bone meal um, So I'm gonna kinda, I wanna kinda go through that process with you with these bones here. This is not a whole lot. Um, I've got more that I've already made at home, but I wanted to kind of show you what I do. Um, I mentioned that I make my own bone meal for a few different reasons. One, I don't really eat uh, certain types of, types of meat, and I just feel like, you know, if I don't eat it, I don't want to really give it to my plants, which is probably, uh, you know, kind of weird logic, but I'm just funny like that. Also, you know, I just look at it like if you have it, you know, as opposed to throwing it away, if it can be used and use it, you know what I mean? You know, you get a, I go to the store and I buy, just say a, a four pack of uh, chicken thicks. Um, you know, you might get that for like uh, maybe four bucks or so. And, you know, we usually will eat the, the meat, throw the bones out. And, you know, that's not a bad price. So you, you know, you're getting your money's worth. But if you can use more than just the part that you eat, then I feel like it's a win-win, you know, in my opinion. So we're just going to kind of go through the process. The first thing you want to do when you have your bones is burn some incense, open all your windows, um, burn some candles, some scented candles with some nice, uh, you know, floral or fruity skints. Um, also, you know, put your gas mask on because this is a, a process that doesn't really smell too pleasant. Um, you know, especially when you get to the part where you're kind of having to bake them. Um, also, some people will take their, take, try to get as much of the meat and stuff off as possible. I don't really worry about that. I boil it and in the first boiling uh, pro part of the process, after you finish with it, you know, all that stuff is like real easy to take off. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing I do is I take all my bones and put them in a pot of water. You wanna submerge them and, uh, and then boil them. Like I said, you know, I don't worry too much about getting all the meat off. You know, little camera lady, she likes to take about two bites and then leave the rest. Um, you know, so I don't really worry about that part of it. But this is uh, step one. All right, so we got it boiling now. Um, you want it to, well, what I do is I let it uh, boil at a rolling boil. For Generally, I do two hours. I'm going to try it today for an hour and then do the rest of the process just to see if there's any difference. But with this boiling process, I don't use the water that comes off of this because right now, you know, you boil it for one to kind of soften the bones. Um, but also for me, it helps again to get the meat and we used to call it the gristle. I don't know if that's the appropriate word. Um, it helps it to helps it to come off, you know, and uh, also it gets the oils, you know, whatever grease, the salt and, and any other seasoning that's on it. It helps it to, uh, it helps get it off. And, um, you know, so that's the purpose of the first boil for me when I do it. So we're going to let this boil and then we'll come back once we get ready for 
uh, the second boil. I meant to mention also that with uh, both boils, um, I usually have to add water periodically just to make sure that it's still uh, submerged in water. So I'll be adding water, you know, during this process as well. So it's been boiling for about 35 minutes now. Um, it's boiled down some, so I'm gonna add some more water to it. Um, I don't know if you're able to see it from here because of the smoke, but you can see uh, like some of the seasonings and the oil that's accumulated on the sides, like where the foam is. So we're just gonna let that boil some more and uh, we'll come back. All right, so this is what we're left with um, after the first boil. What I actually did was um, I poured off most of the water that was in the pot the first time around because there was a lot of oil that came off of it and I don't really want that in my uh, finished product. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rinse this off just to get off excess oil. And as you can see, you can just kind of I'm gonna take one and there's gristle and excess meat. You can just rub that off. Just rub that off and it comes off clean. This is what you're left with. So it's just real easy to get it off after that first boil. I also washed out my pot and put clean water in. Um, I'm doing this one hand because, you know, of course, my camera lady's camera not here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we'll come back. All right, family, so after uh, rinsing and uh, getting the excess gristle and things off of the bone, this is, this is the uh, gristle and extra meat and stuff like that that came off. You know, it's a pretty good amount. I don't really use this. Uh, I'm not saying that you can, but I, I haven't. Um, I actually was just thinking about, you know, trying it or whatever maybe digging a deep enough hole and putting it in and just letting it break down naturally. But, um, and you know, if my, if my trees were planted in, in the ground, I probably would. Um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But here's the bones after cleaning them off. I actually wiped them a little bit with like a scouring pad just to kind of get the excess off. Now at this point, and I apologize about the light, if there is excess, like, uh, you know, meat or whatever that's on it, it doesn't really matter at this point, you know, because you're gonna boil it again. Well, I'm gonna boil it again for about an hour, and then I'm gonna bake it, not for too long, just long enough for it to dry out. Um, and this water that comes off of this boil, this I do use. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started, and we'll come back again. All right, so as you can see, it's boiling. Um, and this is, I consider the second boil. The water looks a lot cleaner than it did the first time around because the oils and uh, seasonings and things like that are not in it. It's not present. So that's why I'm good with using this water to water my plants. Now, family, I would be criminal if I didn't tell you that, th yo, this, this stinks, man. I mean, it smells. It doesn't, it, it doesn't smell good. I mean, you're cooking bones, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I do it because I, I'm just, I like to experiment for one. And then also I just feel like if I can do it myself, why not? And, and also, you know, again, I, I wanna feel like I get my money's worth out of everything that I purchase, but it smells, it smells horrible. Um, and it's gonna be worse when we get to the next part of the process. So uh, we'll get to that. Oh, Jesus. We'll get to that in a little bit. I'll be back. I gotta go outside. All right, so here's the bones after the second boil process. Um, I just spread them out on an old baking sheet. And we're gonna go through the next process, which is the funkiest process. And that is uh, baking them, you know, not for too long. Um, I usually bake them at about 350 for a little less than an hour. I mean, you don't want them to burn, you just want them to dry. Uh, you want to make sure that all the water's out of it. Um, so it doesn't really take too long. An hour or less should be good. I just, you know, I'll turn them a little bit just to make sure that they're dried out. This is the water you're left with. Um, it's cloudy, but it's not dirty. So I do use this water. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake these bones and then I'll show you what they look like afterwards. All right, so here's my dry bones 
fresh out the oven. Now we're gonna put it in this blender and we're gonna blend it up real fine. I usually blend it, I'll blend it for like maybe two minutes, a minute or two I'll say. And then I'll kind of like knock the sides because it does get stuck to the sides. Um, blend it again and I'll do that like maybe three or four times until it gets real fine. I'm gonna let this sit just to kind of cool off a bit and then I'll come back when it's time to blend it. All right, so we got it in the blender. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And of course, this is gonna get loud, so. stuck to the sides it's at the top, so I just kind of knock that off I'm gonna like knock it off for real I'm gonna do this like three different times I'm not gonna have you go through the process that part of it with me I'll come back with the finished product all right so this is the final product this is really fine almost dusty it's very fine and um, here's the liquid that came off that second boil. Now, what I also did, when you blend it, it's always good. Make sure your blender is as dry as possible. Make sure those bones are as dry as possible um, because you're gonna have residue that sticks to the sides and to the top. Um, I got as much of it off as I could and put it in the bag, but the rest of it, just to try to make sure that I got as much of it as possible, I just put the water from the second boil in the blender and then let it go for a while. So. It's got some bone meal in there as well, and I'll be using that. But that's pretty much it, family. Um, you know, just to kind of, for those that don't know, bone meal is good. It, it provides phosphorus to your plants, you know, to your fruit trees, to your vegetables. So anything that you have that may, uh, that may, may provide fruit, you want to give them, well, I'll say bone meal is something good to give them. Um, it helps to establish the roots, and then it also ha helps with uh, fruit development. So, and I should have said that in the beginning. I got to remember that, you know, not everybody that watches is actually um, gardening at this point. Or not everybody that watches knows, you know, what it's good for. But that's what bone meal is good for. So I just made my own. Um, so if you got any questions or comments or suggestions or anything like that, just leave them in the comment section. Um, I appreciate your coming. And peace. One other thing that I meant to mention, family, um, obviously the bones that I used were poultry. I think it was like um, I used some pheasant, um, you know, and yeah, just poultry, chicken. Um, you know, the same process would apply for turkey, you know, for the way that I do it. If you're using denser bones, like say, you know, beef bones, for example, I would boil them a little longer and um, I'd, I'd also bake them longer as well. I mean, you wanna get the bones dry and brittle. And in the case of like beef bones, which gets dense, you want to be able to grind them without damaging your blender. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. All right, peace for real this time. Love y'all. I really do.